Good night. Uh, Louise, uh, you'll serve the raw doves for supper. Supper, Mum? Dinner. Tonight it's dinner. Dinner? Well, that'd be dinner. Let me look at you, Sammy. Hmm? My tie again, huh? But, gee, pa, I'll take it off. Leave it. Sammy, tonight it would not be amiss if you were to take the fiddle in your hand. So Alexander Abel would at least know you were brought up. Oh, gee, Pa. Without the G. Sammy, the application to college, huh? Can I say at least you are applying to Yale, Pennsylvania, Harvard? Why do you have to say anything, Pa? Because maybe it would give your father a little pleasure. Papa, darling, am I going to camp? Don't stand. Zip Mama. Jacob, dear, the door is ringing. Mrs. Goldberg. Thank you. Jacob, dear, there's two men, church. Talk plain, Molly. It's flowers. Louise. Yes, Mr. Goldberg. Put these in a vase. Show them to Mrs. Goldberg. Maybe she'd like to inhale them. No, David? How that Alexander learned the fine things in life? She can teach a bear to dance. Jacob, dear, our guest is ringing. Hello, Jake. Talk plain, Molly. It's Tanda Elka. <laughs> Hello, darling. <laughs> Hello, Hello, Auntie Elka. Elka. Hello, Elka. <laughs> Hello, Davy. <laughs> this is going to upset the table. She has a headache. We only have six place plates. You staying for supper, Elka? If you're asking me, I'm staying. Of course you're staying. What's the excitement? Alexander Abel is in New York and he's coming for supper. Alexander is here. When did he come? Why didn't Molly tell me? I wonder how he looks. I hear he's a rich man. A millionaire. A millionaire. Not such a millionaire. Listen, David, if I say a millionaire, in cash alone he's got 25,000. Did you count it, Elka? Did I have to count your money to know that you haven't got any? Listen, Elka, I need money. My son, Sally, the doctor, is my fortune. Louise, the door. Goldberg Griffin? Yes, it is. Hello, Jake. Alex, glad to see you. Nice to see you. Remember Tante Elka? Of course. Hello, Hello Tante Elka. Uncle David? Uncle David, nice to see you. <laughs> Molly, darling. Hello, Sammy. Here is. Uh, Jake, please, enough is enough. And stop away with the good grammar, please, and zip me. Molly. Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> Very amusing. <laughs> Did you enjoy your supper, Alex? Molly, I haven't had a supper like this in years and years. I'll tell you when. At my mother's house. Of course. That's why I bought the special meat. <laughs> Alex, do you remember Frida Fine? Mm -hmm. Oh, she's a millionaire today. She married a bakery. <laughs> oh, how she loved you, Alex. So she married somebody else. That's how it was with me. They always married somebody else. Mm -hmm. Coffee in the living room. Why? Please. Louise, uh, you will please pass out. Oh, Alexander, <laughs> do you remember how you used to love seedless raisins? Yes. Sammy, <laughs> take your fiddle. Uh, Louise, uh, will you get the raisins, please? Seedless. Here they are, Mrs. Oh, Bullard. thank you. You have a wonderful family, Jake. Thank you. Sit down, Alexander. Alexander, will you take a cup of demitasse? Please. Cigar, Alexander? No, thanks. I'm glad you're doing so well. We manage, Alex. Uh -huh. Next year, my son is going to college. This year, my daughter is going to camp. Papa, darling, I am. Yeah. Ma, I can go to camp. Are you contracting or manufacturing, Jake? Still contracting, Alex. You see, I work for some of the biggest dress manufacturers in New York City. That's why I... Papa, darling, what's the difference between contracting and manufacturing? <laughs> if you're a contractor, you're the middleman. You get squeezed from the top and get squeezed from the bottom. Yeah. Can't tell sugar? But Jake is going to go into manufacturing. My partner and I are considering it very seriously. Listen, Jake. There are less headaches in contracting. Man is half a man without headaches. Why headaches, Pa? What Alex means is this. The manufacturer takes a chance on his own capital. The contractor has the material supplied to him. He doesn't risk his own capital. Is that clear, Rosalie? Not very. <laughs> That's high economics, Rosalie. <laughs> <laughs> Louise! All right, Jake. I am not preoccupied. Uh, one second. One minute to everyone. Good evening, Hello. Mrs. Goldberg. Good evening, Mr. Here's Kennedy. a COD package from Mrs. Morris. I'm going to the movies tonight, and would you please tell her that I paid for the package? Oh, are you paid for it, Mr. Morgan? Yes. Morgan? Yes, uh, it was $14.75. Oh, thank you very much, but don't say anything to Mrs. Morris. I'll give you the money tomorrow. Oh, all right. Good, Good night. night. 
my. It's a new superintendent and he paid for the COD package. Now I'll have to take it back and get a refund. But why, Molly? What is it? It's a toy for the little boy William next door. Then why are you taking it back? You see, she takes the child shopping to the department stores and lets him pick out anything he wants. Then she sends it home COD and sends it back because she can't afford to keep it. But in the meantime, the child is happy because he forgot all about it. Don't take it back. Let me pay for it. Oh, no, Alexander. Oh, no. Mrs. Morris wouldn't like that. She's a very independent and she's a very proud woman. Once I paid for a COD package and I didn't want to take the money and she wouldn't talk to me for two days. Is that so? Wonderful woman. It's a widow. Would she be somebody for somebody? Don't be so subtle, Molly. Alexander's not interested in beautiful widows. Louise, press the vestibule, take the downstairs button. That may be someone for me. Oh, yes? I uh, have a little surprise for you. Surprise? Uh, what surprise? Well, I'm getting married. Oh, wonderful, Thank Alexander. You. Congratulations. Thanks. Good luck. Oh, congratulations. Who is she? Congratulations, Alexander. Thank you, Molly. You should have married a long time ago. Well, I only hope it's not too late. For a man, nothing is ever too late. Even in the Bible, it says a man shouldn't live without a wife. Well, it wasn't an easy decision. A man of my age gets a little set in his ways. Oh, she's a sensible woman that has lived a little. You'll have a good life together. Why didn't you bring her for supper, Alexander? Well, she's staying with relatives, Molly, and couldn't get away. Way, so I asked her to meet me here. So when are you getting married, Alex? Just as soon as Debbie finishes with her shopping. Well, why don't you take her down to Jake's place? He's making such beautiful dresses. J.D. the Bolero model. Why not? Style number 762. May I, Molly? Surely. Excuse me. Darling. This is Miss Sherman. Debbie, I want you to meet my friends. My oldest and dearest friends. Hello, how do you do? This is Molly. How do you do, Molly? How do you do? I'm honored and esteemed to meet you. <laughs> I want you to meet my husband, Mr. Gover. How do you I do, do, Mr. Gover? And uh, my Uncle David. Hello. Hello, Uncle David. And my Tante Elke, my auntie. Hello, Hello darling. Yes. And my son, Sammy, on the threshold of college. Hello, Hello. And my Rosalie. Hello, my Rosalie. <laughs> May I take the wraps? Oh, please, please if you would. A baby. If she's 60, he'll David, be. please. Where there's love, there's no age. Beautiful, baby. Don't you think it's a little too youthful? Well, maybe it is. Tomorrow, Debbie, I'd like you to meet me early. I'll take you up to a coat house. Oh, Alex, how much more do I need? <laughs> Darling, how should I know what you need for a trousseau? Look, dear, with all the shopping and the fitting that you have to do, why don't you stay with us? Why should you have to travel back and forth to your aunt and Passaic? Well, I wouldn't be imposing. Imposing? Don't be foolish. We have plenty of room. Wouldn't be crowding you? Oh, please, Alexander. It's very nice of you. I think I'll say yes, Alex. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Alex, what do you think? Not bad at all. <laughs> nice little place, eh? I'm glad to see all your machines working. You've done all right for yourself, Jake. Uh, Mr. Goldberg, I have that ready for you. Excuse me, Alex. Uh, my accountant. Certified. 